Hello, Fairmount. This week, I'm going to give you a little lecture uh, about simplicity as an ideal in classical music. This lecture is based on a lecture that I gave in Xi'an, China, when I went there to visit and to perform and to teach a few years ago. So uh, to start off with, I want to read to you this quote by Friedrich Chopin. He says, Simplicity is the final achievement. After one has played a vast quantity of notes and more notes, it is simplicity that emerges as the crowning reward of art. And uh, if you think about it, it's, it's kind of a difficult concept to grasp, to wrap your mind around, because music is very complicated. And if you think about Chopin's music, there's very complicated harmony, uh, there is very complicated counterpoint. Um, so, you know, you can analyze his music for days, for years, and, and never quite really understand it. Um, so what is he talking about here? Um, and I think the point that Chopin is making that no matter how complicated the music is, the way in which it is received by your audience or by the listener is effortless. So if you think about um, the music of certain composers, another good composer to talk about is Mozart. Uh, they have very pure, simple melodies that are very easy to get stuck in your head, for example. So that's the type of simplicity that he's talking about. And um, just kind of to finish off this point, uh, I had a teacher once who gave me a very interesting explanation for the difference between simplicity and plainness, because I asked her about, you know, if you're playing music and you refrain from doing certain type of expressive rebody, for example, uh, doesn't that make it a little bit plain? And she was explaining to me that, you know, the difference between simplicity and plainness is the difference between the marching formation of a well trained elite infantry formation versus the disorderly chaotic formation of peasants or of people who are not trained as soldiers. So she was saying that, you know, um, the elite infantry, they can do a lot of different things, but they present themselves in a very simple way. And that's what simplicity is. It's, it's the potential for complexity, but the presentation through simplicity. Uh, you know, the classical era of music is related to the classical period in European history of art and philosophy, where uh, European culture in general became fascinated by ancient Greek and Roman culture. And, you know, they became uh, influenced across many fields. They became influenced uh, in architecture, in art, in music, in uh, philosophy. You know, a lot of legal structures became um, influenced by uh, legal codes uh, dating back to ancient Rome. And here's an example in this slide of uh, a building that was built in 27 BC in Rome, the Pantheon. And I want to bring your attention to, you know, the triangle, for example, that you can see it's an isosceles triangle, meaning that the two sides of the triangle are equal in length. So it's, it's a symmetric, symmetric triangle. You can fold it in half and uh, the sides would overlap. Um, also, you can see the pillars here, the columns. They're, they're um, cylinders, essentially, right? So they're, they're all very simple shapes, the triangles, the circles, the spheres. And that's an example of simplicity in architecture. On this slide, you have um, a building that was built in 1818, which is, uh, you know, in, in music, that would be the end of the classical, the beginning of the Romantic era. But essentially, this is uh, an example of the influence of Roman architecture on European architecture of this time period. And again, you see the isosceles triangle in the top of the building. And uh, you see the columns. Here. 
So uh, it's very interesting to see how similar this building is to the Pantheon, right? It's built uh, almost two centuries, two, uh, two, two thousand years later, actually. And again, it's an emphasis on simple geometric shapes, columns, lines, and symmetry. So now let's talk about music and how uh, classical European culture thought about the influence of ancient Greek and Roman um, music on uh, in their in, in their conception of music. So uh, the Europeans focused on the idea of the bard because the books, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey, were really influential on European culture, and of course they were written by uh, the Greek bard Homer. And Homer would travel uh, from city to city, and he would tell these epic stories about um, legends and the siege of Troy and battles. And not only would he tell these stories, he would actually sing these stories and accompany himself on the lute or the harp or on the guitar. And the texture of that these instruments provide is really important because they're generally quiet instruments that have an arpeggiated uh, harmonic texture that they provide that does not interfere with um, the clarity of being able to hear the singer and um, they don't they also don't take away from the clarity of the text that he is saying so it's very easy in spite of all the music that's happening to hear the words that he's pronouncing and that's the type of clarity that um, you know you 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 expect to see in music that is influenced by bard music. Um, so I have here an example from the 20th century, which is uh, Jacek Kaczmarski. He's a Polish bard. He was a historian who um, decided to start writing music. And so a lot of his songs have a historical basis. Um, this particular song is based on a character from a novel by Henryk Sienkiewicz, and the name of the character is Pan Wodyowski, and he's basically the hero of the novel, and he um, heroically gives his life in, def in the defense of Poland's southern border. And um, not only does he do that, he's generally an exceptionally noble and good character throughout the book and throughout other books as well, because he's, um, he's a character in various books um, by Sienkiewicz. So uh, listen to this song, and I will try to draw for you on the screen um, certain shapes that relate to the melodic shape that you'll be listening to, and hopefully they'll remind you of the isosceles triangle on the previous slide um, from the architecture example. Nieba leci mały rycerz Wybuchem rozerwany wstrzępy W Rzeczpospolitej granicy Tureckie kładą się za stępy Męka imperium pełne swobód Rozerwą je sąsiedzi rychło Jak Basi rzekł Tak powie Bogu Pan Michał swoje kredo Nic to 